Another hurricane has set its sights on Florida. This one is called Milton, and it just strengthened to Category 5 in the Gulf of Mexico with a projected path at the Sunshine State's west coast. It's expected to make landfall near Tampa late on Wednesday, possibly early Thursday, just about two weeks after Helene came ashore as a Category 4 storm in the state's Big Bend region before decimating the southeast. On Sunday, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis talked about the storm. The entire Florida Peninsula on the Gulf on the Gulf side has the potential uh, to have major impacts from storm surge. Up and down the peninsula, preparations are underway with houses and businesses being boarded up, sandbags being put in place as people prepare for possible life-threatening storm surge. Tim. Mega Hurricane Helene's devastation has spurred widespread recovery efforts with significant support from private individuals and organizations like Dolly Parton, Operation Blessing, the Salvation Army, and Walmart. Helene made landfall on September 26th as a Category 4 storm, causing widespread destruction across six U.S. southeastern states. The storm produced severe flooding, caused extensive property damage and infrastructure failures, and clean at least 230 lives. According to a local Asheville, North Carolina resident, federal assistance has been lacking despite President Biden saying people in the impacted areas are getting what they need. We aren't getting what we need right now. I mean, there's there's plenty of people that are still homeless that lost everything. I mean, we are starting to get food and water, which is a is a we we're very thankful for it, mm -hmm. but there's many people that aren't going to get that are not going to get what they need for many, many months. As for government assistance, reports indicate much of the money that was earmarked for FEMA has gone to pay for food and housing for illegal immigrants. Uh, this storm has become the deadliest hurricane to hit the U.S. since Katrina in 2005. Uh, North Carolina lawmakers are returning to a rally this week uh, to pass legislation securing financial aid uh, for the western part of the state after Helene's devastating blow. In the meantime, Just the News reports aid has uh, poured into the area from multiple states with helicopters spotting people from mirrors reflecting the sun. Some organizations are even using mules to carry medicine and supplies through debris littered terrain. Virginia Fox and Chuck Edwards are congressional representatives from the portion of the Tar Heel State hardest hit. They say 49 water treatment plants are without power and 43 are out of water. As of Friday, 130 roads had reopened while six 617 remained closed. Whistleblowers are accusing FEMA of misappropriating taxpayer dollars and leaving first responders without orders in the Hurricane Helene response. According to the Daily Caller, in a letter to DHS, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, Florida Congressman Matt Gates cited federal, state, and local whistleblowers accusing FEMA, which falls under DHS, of misusing funds and leaving responders on the ground without deployment orders. Gates says his office specifically confirmed that hundreds, if not thousands, of service members were deployed by the Department of Defense to North Carolina and were left sitting idly by waiting on FEMA. Mayorga said last week FEMA was running short of funding. The New York Post reports since the fall of 2022, FEMA administered programs have spent $1.4 billion to address the illegal immigration crisis caused by executive orders President Joe Biden signed after taking office. SpaceX and Tesla founder Elon Musk also accused FEMA of blocking Starlink deliveries to help residents stay connected to the Internet in the wake of Hurricane Helene. Reportedly, Musk had posted a conversation with SpaceX engineers on the ground in North Carolina, which emphasized that FEMA was blocking shipments and seizing goods and services, claiming they belonged to FEMA. Quote, SpaceX engineers are trying to deliver Starlink terminals and supplies to devastated areas in North Carolina right now, and FEMA is both failing to help and won't let others help. This is unconscionable. A second part of Musk's post blasted the FAA for throttling private flights over North Carolina, which Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg decried. However, here's a Buttigieg announcing temporary flight restrictions.
There's also some safety issues that come up. For example, uh, temporary flight restrictions to make sure that uh, the airspace is clear for any uh, flights uh, or drone activity that, that might be uh, involved in helping to uh, uh, allow those emergency responders to do their job. Meanwhile, the New York Times reported that in Helene's wake, Internet service had grown political, pointing toward the connection between Musk and GOP nominee former President Donald Trump. Mike? Fewer tech billionaire Elon Musk took the stage in Butler, Pennsylvania on Saturday at the Trump rally, just about three months after the first assassination attempt on the former president's life there. The true test of someone's character is how they behave under fire. And we, we, we had one president who couldn't climb a flight of stairs <laughs> and another who was fist pumping after getting shot. <laughs> Along with throwing his support behind Donald Trump in this upcoming election, Musk also called on people who have not to register to vote. I think this, this, this election, I think it's the most important election of our lifetime. This is, this is no ordinary election. Uh, the other side wants to take away your freedom of speech. They want to take away your right to bear arms. They, they want to. It, it, it's we're, we're, They want to take away your right to vote effectively. You got 14 states now that that don't require voter ID. Elon Musk went on to say Donald Trump must win to preserve the Constitution. He must win to preserve democracy in America. And by the way, today is the last day to vote or to register to vote rather in the state of Texas. At the same site in Pennsylvania, where an assassin tried to take his life, Donald Trump delivered a defiant speech. Just to let you know that tonight I returned to Butler in the aftermath of tragedy and heartache to deliver a simple message to the people of Pennsylvania and to the people of America. Our movement to make America great again stands stronger, prouder, more united, more determined, and nearer to victory than ever before. The former president did not name the shooter Thomas Crooks, but his allies suggested that Democratic rhetoric contributed to the violence. Trump took time to honor the victims who were speaking about his opponent, other Democrats, migrants, and the political establishment. His running mate, J.D. Vance, praised Trump's resilience and called out the Democrats for their continued verbal attacks. Greg.